الآن مع الكلمة الافتتاحية لسعادة خلفان بالهول الرئيس التنفيذي لمؤسسة دبي للمستقبل Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Museum of the Future and the Dubai Future Forum 2024, the world's largest gathering of futurists. I am Mariam, your virtual AI guide throughout the two-day event. Now, the opening remarks by His Excellency Khilfan Bill Hole, Chief Executive. I think she's done now. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellencies, uh, dear friends, and welcome to the 2024 edition of the Dubai Future Forum, the world's largest gathering of futurists from all over the world. Now, for those of you that have, I've had the honor to present to in the past, you might have noticed that I usually wander around the stage and I have my clicker with me, but I'm giving it a bit of a twist today because there's a very precise message that I want to deliver. So, you are among 2,500 futurists thought leaders, and academic experts. From over 100 countries and over 100 global institutions. Joining us today and tomorrow, welcome to Dubai and welcome to the Museum of the Future. Why are we here? What is our purpose? This annual gathering has great potential to make historical impact because a lot can change in a year. That's how much time is between us today and when we get to meet again next edition. In one year, we have opportunity. Opportunity to make our industries future ready. Opportunity to innovate for our planet. Opportunity to create better lives for all. And make no mistake, we live extraordinary times. What we're about to see in the next 12 months isn't just change. It's a series of era-defining moments. Because the wheel of future design is spinning faster than we or our ancestors could have imagined. Throughout history, civilizations have understood the importance of planning for the future. Ancient societies delivered great innovations that changed the world, from the water wheel to minted coins to early legal systems. They also watched the stars to travel, farm, celebrate, and trade while they continued to learn more about our galaxy. But in contrast to the simple past, today we face booming growth in data, we face advances in machine learning speeds. We face the development of real-time predictions. We face the challenge of ensuring technological progress stays true to our core human values. We face a new age where every industry must transform or it will be left behind. So I ask, what will change until I see you again? Now, here are seven possible firsts our world may experience. First, we will see a world moving beyond GDP. Rapid economic shifts are reshaping governments and nations today. But a country with a high GDP may not offer the best quality of life. This calls for a rethink of GDP, a measure adopted nearly 80 years ago. For the first time, the UN system of national counts is including environment and well-being to calculate GDP. This is a giant leap towards redefining national progress and prosperity. How can we explore future scenarios that incorporate new indicators beyond the traditional measure of GDP? What will the world look like if GDP is no longer the main indicator of growth? Second, the world will double its energy from, sun, from the sun. Every second, the sun radiates over 5.5 trillion times what humanity consumes in a year. And in the coming year, our world will tap into, our, into nature's limitless source of energy more than ever. 
in 2022, our global solar energy capacity reached 220 gigawatts. But by 2025, this is expected to reach approximately 450 gigawatts. This is more than the total installed power capacity of Germany and Spain combined. This number will shatter records for renewable power. Why? Because this is how the world chooses to respond to energy crises, by turning to nature for greater energy security. Third, we will see humanity returning to the moon. Yes. In the next 12 months, we'll witness humanity begin its mission to the return to the moon. NASA's lunar mission will launch to land the first astronauts to the moon in just over 50 years. The moon, a 4.5 billion year old time capsule, is a constant reminder for us here in the UAE and for our own ambitious space program to dream bigger and to reach higher. But I wonder, with all the technological progress we've achieved on Earth in the past 50 years, what knowledge will the world gain from landing on the moon this time around? And how much will this new achievement impact humanity in the future? Fourth, a genome bank will reach one million samples. Already, the largest genome banks in the UK and the UAE each have over half a million samples. But soon, one genome bank will surpass this with a million samples. But what does this mean for us? It means we're entering an era where healthcare can truly become personalized, where we can anticipate and prevent certain diseases before they even develop. But it also arises profound questions about how we will use this knowledge responsibly. This one million milestone would not just be a scientific achievement, it would be a gateway to reshaping our approach to health and identify and human potential. And this milestone might happen in our nation. Fifth, we will see the number of students learning outside of school reaching 5 million. Many, many countries don't track this trend, and some even ban it. Before COVID, nearly 3 million children were homeschooled globally, with the greatest numbers from the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. In 2022, the US had 3.4 million homeschooled students, and in the UK, numbers rose by 34% to around 100,000. The real total is probably even higher. By next year, outside school learning will reach 5 million students. This shift reflects a growing understanding that education is not one size fits all. Yes, traditional schooling doesn't work for everyone, and technology has been a key enabler. This rise of online platforms, virtual classrooms, and customized curriculums means that families now have more control over how, when, and what their children learn. Sixth, we will see the first brain-computer chip implanted in a healthy person. Indeed, brain-computer implants have been a controversial topic for a while. Elon Musk's Neuralink has now implanted two brain chips into two patients with spinal cord injuries. But now, what once felt like science fiction will become reality as the first device will be implanted as part of a trial into a healthy person. This breakthrough will redefine connections. It opens possibilities we've only dreamt of. Enhancing memory, improving focus, even interacting with technology through thought alone. But it also raises another profound question. What does it mean to blur the line between human and machine? Does this redefine what it means to be human? Seventh, we will see the first AI board member of a Fortune 500 company. Yes. We've seen AI accomplish incredible things, from diagnosing diseases 
to driving cars, predicting financial trends, and even creating arts. But we've also seen the emergence of AI in executive roles. Last year, the first AI humanoid CEO was appointed by a European company to lead with data-driven precision and strategic insights. But now, you might see a leader that is AI-driven, not a humanoid. I expect the first Fortune 500 company to have its first AI board member in the upcoming year. The evolution will force us to rethink what it actually means to lead. Can AI possess vision and purpose? Or will it simply optimize for efficiency? Ladies and gentlemen, these firsts are signals of a world in motion. As we look forward, our responsibility as policymakers and futurists is clear. It's up to us to study these global trends, identify opportunities, and assess risks. And these firsts are not random. As His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum said, they are created by those who imagine, design, and execute the future. And this is why we gather here in Dubai today. We're here to explore and capitalize on future opportunities to refine the quality of life, offering insights and best practices to governments, businesses, and civil society worldwide. So my friends and colleagues, what will change until I see you again? A lot will. But my question is to you, what will you have changed when I see you again? Thank you.